There are so many items and options to consider when thinking about buying an RV. A lot of times, we think something is important, like four season capability or a stealthy look, but how do we know those things are important? And if you had to choose, what would you give up to get those things you really need? For instance, we want lithium batteries and a stealthy look, but we also want separate sleep and work areas and four season capability. Screens in our doors are important too because we want to have doors open but don't want bugs flying in and out. So which one of these is most important? And what can we do without if we have to but still be happy? I recently came across a tool that the Fit RV uses to determine just what items and options are most important when choosing your motorhome. It's a comparison chart in grid form. I have no idea if they invented this approach or just found it somewhere and are using it to search for RVs, but it sure is an amazing tool regardless. Basically, you determine all the items that you're interested in, all your must-haves and all the deal breakers. List them down a column, then list them in the same order across the table you make. Now when I did this, I came up with 38 items, way too many to explain in a video. So I created a smaller chart of just 10 items. Understand, these are what we find most important. Things we can't live without or that we really want. Your items may vary quite a bit from our list and your priorities will most probably be different from ours. And of course, remember the table I'm showing you is pared down from the original 38 items. As you can see, I list a number of items in no particular order down this column from under 22 foot 6 inches to stealth look. I then listed all these items again in the same order across. Each item gets compared to one other item and you choose which one is more important. As I mentioned, I numbered each one so I could compare them more easily. This comes into play later when I use a formula to compare the items. As an example, if we compare the all-wheel drive item, which is numbered 2, with the van under 22 foot 6 inches item, which is numbered at 1 at the top, I have to decide which is more important. In my case, I chose the number 1, which corresponds to the van under 22 foot 6 inch item. If I had thought all-wheel drive was more important, I would have chosen the number 2, which corresponds to all-wheel drive. So you do this for each pair of items all across the grid. Now you see why I didn't show you the 38 item grid. Way too many items to be looking at in a video. That's 703 comparisons for those that are counting. If I compare side back screen doors, number 9, with dual compressor fridge, number 7, I choose the fridge because, quite honestly, screen doors is something that can be made while a, a fridge would be a, a high cost item. So I put down a number seven. You may reason the opposite, which is fine. If so, you would enter number nine. That would represent the screen doors. The same goes with the three point passenger seat belts and number eight, which I wouldn't be able to retrofit at all. So I put down an eight. On the other hand, a stealth look, which is number 10, isn't something I can build in a van. So I would choose that over the fridge and therefore enter 10. But the three point passenger seat belts are more important to me than a stealth look. So I choose them by entering an eight. And finally, I choose the stealth look over the screen doors. So enter a 10. Poor screen doors, they don't get any love. Notice the number I put down is the number of whatever the item is I choose. This isn't a, a point system we're doing here. We aren't putting down 10 points, just comparing one item over another. The last column is the count column, and this is why all the items are numbered. This looks at the entire table and counts how many times it sees a certain number and puts that count in the cell the number of times it sees that number. So, so this is the formula I use. This formula looks at 
all the cells from column C to column K and from row 3 to row 11. That's the CK11 part. In other words, it looks at all the ratings I put into the table. It then compares those cells to the number of the item for that row. That's the A2 part. Now the A2 part changes from row to row, so you get A3, A4, A5, and, and so on. The count if function just adds up the number of times it sees that item. For instance, when we look at all-wheel drive, which is number two, and the lithium battery system, which is number four, we can see the all-wheel drive is listed only twice, while the lithium battery system shows up eight times. Once everything is counted, I, I just put it all together from highest to lowest and made a most to least important table. As you can see, the most important items are a smaller length fan and lithium batteries. The least important are the screen doors, but that makes sense since I can have them added later. Notice the most important things are, are items that can't be added after we buy the RV. Things that have to do with the RV design layout or the van itself. The bottom two items can be added later. If the van comes with a three-way fridge, we can have it replaced with a, a dual compressor fridge. And of course, the screen doors, they're not as important as we first thought. And I think that's the real strength of this approach. We were able to prioritize items and even realize things like the screen doors were not vital components. We thought they were, but the table says not so. So now we can go out and compare RVs, not based on what looks cool or catches our fancy at that moment, not by making decisions based on what our mood is when we happen to be looking at a particular RV or by thinking we know what matters and what doesn't, but by having a list of priorities we know are real because we made the list ourselves. You can easily see there are some absolutes here, the top items in the list. Any RV that doesn't meet those top items shouldn't even be considered. Those items are our top priorities. We can now limit our search to only those RVs that fit those top criteria, saving us time and energy. Making a table like this helps to clarify needs when, when making a decision on an RV. It makes you start thinking about how you're going to use the RV and what is required to get there. It's a lot of money you're going to be spending, so you better know what's important and what you can do without. In our case, we narrowed down our search to a Class B. It fits our way of travel. You may find a Class A more to your liking, or a pop-up, or a towable, or maybe even realize there isn't an RV that fits all your needs, so you'll need to compromise somewhere. And that's okay. At least now you know. You may be interested in visiting the Fit RV, so I've added a link below in the description, as well as a direct link to their uh, video on uh, their whole decision-making process. Good luck on your search. Be seeing you.